All right, guys, it's David Henry with Hunter Engineering. I get the question all the time, what tires and wheels can the Revolution not do? Well, I've yet to find any yet. This is an example of a 26 by 16, a very wide wheel with a very low offset. And we're going to show a little manual operation on the Revolution, how we can accomplish the task of dismounting this wheel. First thing you'll notice is a reverse mount. I'm going to set that flange plate into the lug nut holes and you can't see the other side but what I'm doing is affixing that flange plate to the wheel with a couple bolts. Then we're going to jump over to using the wheel lift to pick that up. You'll notice the flange plate is on the wheel. I'm going to go ahead and bring that uh, wheel lift down and then I'll slide that wheel and flange plate right onto the spindle. We'll zoom in here close so you can kind of see. We're going to pull that spindle up just a hair to line it up and then pick up that wheel. After that, we got the wheel suspended by the lug nuts. Now we can go ahead and put our center clamp in. You see I'm using the plastic spacer and without the other cones on there, the shaft goes right through the center and then we can go ahead and clamp that. Like on the screen, it says clamp, but we can indicate that by the pedal on the ground. Okay, once it's clamped, we're not going to set the dimension like we usually do because we want free reign of all the tools, but I like to bring that roller down to the top of the tire. This is a little up uh, view from the top. I like to bring that roller to the top of the tire just to help support the tire as I break that lower bead. On a wheel and tire this heavy, this big, it just relieves a lot of stress off the bottom. Again, I set it up and I'm going to rotate around until I break that bead. Now I'm going to insert the upper roller indent it in on the bead bundle and rotate around. As I'm rotating around, I'm putting a little lube on the uh, upper roller just to help feed that so it runs freely on the top of the tire. Push down a little further and then just confirm that bead is broken all the way. You'll notice it's rotating around. I'm going to stick the brush right down in there so I can get some lube on that drop center, make sure I get it on the bead seats of the tire. Next thing I see I'm going to do is going to bring the mount head down into position. Once we get down, that down into position, I want to push down on my roller just a little bit to increase a gap. This particular wheel was kind of tough in the fact that it didn't open up a much of a gap for our hook to go into, so I bring my bead presses down to make sure that other side of the tire is down in the drop center. And remember, this is going all manual. And then you'll see the gentleman on the far side of the machine, he's putting a bar in there. I pushed the hook down, but it still didn't insert in because it's such a low profile tire and stiff. So he's pushing a little pressure out with the bead lever so he can pop that off. We'll show the rest of the procedure in a minute, but I wanted to show that the width of that wheel and, and that it's so deep that the lower roller doesn't have much room to go up to hit it. So manual operations is usually the best. Uh, we're gonna clean this wheel and we're gonna put the new sensor in and make sure we're ready to mount it. Sorry, I bypassed uh, the first bead, but we pushed that on, and I'll show you that procedure in a minute <clears throat> with the second tire. But we want to make sure it's underneath that bead hook. I'm going to bring that roller, once that mount head's down in position, I'm going to bring the roller, the upper roller, down to make sure it stays underneath that bead hook. And then I'm going to bring those bead presses over, just like we do on all our automatic, but I'm doing this manually. I'm going to bring that bead press down, advance the tire a little bit, and then bring that down behind that TPMS sensor and let the machine finish the work for me, pushing that tire onto the wheel. This upward view, you can see really well kind of how I'm manipulating that roller so I can keep it in the drop center the whole time, and it pushes that tire on nice and easy. Go ahead and clear your tools. Once we clear all the tools, we can inflate that to the pressure we need. There's me searching for the valve stem. It's kind of hard to see on the back side of the wheel, but rotating around until I found it. All right, so here's the next tire. You'll see I'm lubing that bottom bead roller just as I break that bead. I have my hand underneath just confirming the bottom bead is broken. Then I'm doing the upper bead. Same thing, put a little roller on that, or a little, a little lube on that roller so I can make sure it feeds itself down in there, indenting it into the wheel and pushing down on the bead bundle until I open up the gap. From here, you'll see the, uh, the steps a little different or a little better we're looking at the front of the machine but I'm going to go ahead and lube that hook so we can feed down into the tire a little easier. Bring that mount head down into the proper position on the wheel just like it would automatically. This is a good time to think on how the machine works automatically and then you can mimic that uh, with manual operations. 
go ahead and lower that hook down uh, see if it'll pop into the tire if it doesn't then we might need a little assistance so I was just manipulating a little bit pushing down seeing if it would pop in because this tire is so stretched you know the wheel is a lot wider than the tire um, it just didn't really want to pop in there and like I did before I brought that bead press down 180 away from the mount head and I extended it out a little bit and then pushed down once I was in the drop center I tried to pull it back toward the wheel to see if that would assist or help me it really didn't so what you'll see is <clears throat> I'm gonna bring that hook up just a hair just so Miguel has a little bit more room um, but you'll see him work around the back side of the machine with a tire lever and all he's doing is sticking that down in between the tire and the wheel and pushing a little pressure out and that little pressure out is hot, helping it hop up on that bead hook uh, I reposition it one time just because it wasn't quite right but now it's on there and we're ready to dismount okay we're gonna bring that upper roller out of the way we can leave that pressure down 180 from the beam out head and we're gonna bring that up uh, lower roller up you'll notice the tire is going to flex up when I push that lower roller up then we can pull that upper bead up and over the edge of the wheel with a bead hook if we use that little traction device shove it in that uh, well once we get a once we get a uh, little bit of a uh, gap there we can push that in there once we push that in there it's a little tight right now I should have got a little more tire lube on there that's something to be noted that yeah I put a little lube on there and you it should come right off but you'll see it pulled that top bead off pretty easily we'll just continue around at this point we're going to use that bead hook to support or pull the tire up as we're supporting the tire on the opposite side just to make sure it gets into the drop center I'm just checking the TPMS sensor and making sure it's in a safe spot I'm just trying to make sure when I bring that lower roller up it doesn't contact anything so I'm gonna get that upper roller up out of my way a little further then you'll notice I rotate the wheel just a hair as I pull up just make sure it's all the way in that, in that drop center and then I'm gonna bring that lower roller I'm looking through the top of the tire so I can see that lower roller as it comes up and peaks out the top of that wheel I'm gonna indent it just above the edge of the wheel once it's in a good position above the edge of the wheel I can go ahead and release the mount head just so it has a little more freedom up there and get that up out of the way and then continue dismounting that bottom bead you notice that bead roller takes that off very easily and Miguel showed me this little trick on getting the tire off uh, pretty interesting the way he rolls that tire up around that bead presses and then tilts it off without having to hit any of those tools pretty neat procedure and this is Miguel putting the tire back on the same way kind of wrap it around those bead presses and that gives us a spot that we can push it on so what we're going to do here is going to push that first bead on until it just gets some traction You'll notice I'm looking at the edge of the bead and seeing where I can put pressure. And I'm going to use that upper roller and push down on the tire, and that'll push that tire right on. Pretty amazing uh, with the assistance of those bead presses, what we can do, manipulate the tire to get it where we need. At this point, we're just, <laughs> it kind of seated up on the lower bead, so we're just trying to pull up on there to give it room for that mount head to come down into. So you notice I bring that mount head down into position. Once I get that into position, you'll see we'll start this procedure. All right, got it into position. Now I'm bringing those bead presses over just like we would on any other wheel. We're gonna bring that lower or upper roller down to make sure that tire stays in the drop center underneath the mount hook. Then I'm gonna bring those bead presses down, advance it a little bit just so we don't pinch the tire between the, the wheel. And once it's got a little bit of a gap, go ahead and push those bead presses down. I think I'm adjusting my dimension there just a hair. Go ahead and push that down into position, make sure that roller's down in position, and then it'll pop that second bead on, just like that. Pretty amazing the capabilities of this machine. You know, not only is it automatic and autonomous like you see me run it in the shows, but it also do these, do these really obscure tire and wheels, the ones that are really, really difficult that no other tire changer out there really has the room. And then here's that truck. You know, it's a pretty extreme truck. It was a SEMA show truck. Um, the customer had 35 inch tires. They were way too small for the wheel. Uh, for that Cummins diesel, it needed a little more tire to support the weight with that 26 inch wheel. So we went ahead and put some 38s on it. Check it out, American Forge wheels, 26 by 16. And a little bit of magic with the Revolution Tire Changer.